Welcome back to GCN Racing and to La Vuelta España. Today was stage 8 of the three week race. Yesterday we finished up the wall that is the Master La Costa and when you have gradients like that it's very hard to beat this man. Alejandro Valverde at the Vuelta in the World Champions jersey taking a hugely popular stage victory. Second on the day was Primoz Roglic but third place was enough to see this man Miguel Angel Lopez go back into the red jersey. Today, stage 8 was somewhat less hilly, but by no means a guaranteed sprint finish. The start was in Vows outside a sports hall named after my former teammate, one of the nicest guys you'd ever meet, Chavi Tondo. Uh, rest in peace, Chavi. The opening part of the stage was on rolling terrain, then the second category climb came with around 40 k's to go. This was going to be a tough one for the fast men. And after 14 kilometres, we had 21 riders head up the road. The biggest names being Luis Leon Sanchez of Astana, Zdenek Stebar of De Koenig Quickstep, Sergio Anau of UAE, plus previous stage winners Dylan Turns of Bahrain Merida and Jesus Harada of Cofidis. His teammate, Nicolas Ede, was also in there and the best placed on GC, 6 minutes and 24 seconds behind Miguel Angel Lopez. Astana were left with the responsibility of controlling tempo in the main group behind, but the gap continued to rise six minutes with 46 kilometres remaining. On to the only categorised climb of the day then, and it was a bit cagey amongst the rides in the 21-man breakaway. Ede here keen to press on, but thinking more about the stage win at this point than the general classification. The pace behind wasn't exactly flat out, but it was enough to see a few riders get dropped from the peloton. Amongst them was KOM leader and stage winner Angel Madrasso of Burgos BH, along with Fabio Jakobsen, the Dutch national champion and also winner of a stage. At the front by now was Peter Stettner of Trek Segafredo, a good climber but not a sprinter. This was where he would need to make the difference and he was doing a fantastic job. He had clawed out an advantage of almost half a minute by the time he got just over halfway up the climb. However, he would soon have company in the form of Fernando Barcello, the 23-year-old from Escadi Basque Country, Murias. He would catch him coming up towards the top of the climb with just 700 metres remaining there, but they'd soon have more company. Uh, this is Jesus Rada, who obviously wanted to add another stage victory to his Palmares. He wouldn't quite reach them by the top of the climb, but he managed to get onto their wheels down the descent on the other side. There was still all to play for though, just 13 seconds separated them from the rest of the group here behind. Uh, by this point, Nicholas Ede was also creeping towards being the virtual race leader on the road. Were Astana and Miguel Angel Lopez about to lose the red jersey for the third time in this race? With 25 k's to go, it was pretty much all back together at the front, and in fact, some of the stage would be decided on this treacherous descent. Luis Leon Sanchez was amongst a few riders who'd be distanced down it, and he would play no further part in the outcome of the stage. By this point, Ade was in the virtual race lead, but we had four riders off the front. Guerrero of Katusha Alpacin, Tusvelt of Sunweb, Bartello and also Aaron Burrow of Cajurural. A man who's been on tremendous form recently, in fact. Just as it was coming back together, yet again Tusvelt decided to go on the counter-attack, and he was looking good until this. Going too hot into a wet roundabout, he'd hit the deck, his hopes of a stage win over in an instant. The last 10 kilometres was, in fact, full of attacks. This is Tobias Ludvigsen of Groupama FDJ on the move, closely followed by Zdenek Stibar. And in fact, it would be Stibar who eventually caught Ludvigsen a few hundred metres later, going straight past him and setting off to try and take his first welter stage win since 2013. Half the battle in the finale, though, was simply to stay upright. The roads were incredibly slippery. Stibar would eventually get caught inside the closing kilometre, which set up a cagey and nervous sprint amongst the rest of the breakaway. Guerrero was the first to kick towards the line. Uh, he'd go straight towards it, but in the saddle flying past him was Nikias Arndt. Really rare to see someone sprinting like this, but it was clearly very effective. Nobody was able to get close to the German, who crossed the line a good few bike lengths ahead of everybody else. An absolutely brilliant win by Nikia Sands. Uh, that in fact is his second Grand Tour stage win, but interestingly it's the first time he's crossed the line first. His previous stage win at the Giro a few years ago only came about after Giacomo Nizzolo was disqualified for veering off his line. There's your top ten, a disappointed Aaron Buru in second place, Tosh van der Sander rounding out the top three for Lotto Soudal. The peloton would eventually roll in over nine minutes down on the race winner, and so yet again we had a new race leader and by quite some margin. Nicholas Ede is a man who's previously won the King of the Mountains competition here at the Welter, and now he is the race leader. 
His advantage is over Dylan Churns, who's back up to second place. Two minutes and 21 seconds of difference. Miguel Angel Lopez now down to third. The time gaps amongst the genuine GC contenders remain the same, but also into the top ten is Hagen, uh, the Norwegian of Lotto Sudal. That could all change once again tomorrow, though, because tomorrow's stage is a little beast. It's only 94.4 kilometres long, but with barely a metre of flat around the notoriously tough roads of Andorra. Five categorised climbs, including the first Especial of this year, the Cold La Galina, and a mountain top finish of the Cortai Don Camp, 2,095 metres above sea level. My prediction? Carnage and Quintana. See you tomorrow.